Matthew chapter number 10. We're getting ready to get introduced to the crew, Jesus' posse, the 12, if you don't know who I'm talking about. And it says, And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease. Now, before we get to the names of the 12, that word power there, it's in the sense of delegated power, delegated authority. You see, Jesus ain't went to the cross yet, has he? So he has to delegate this power to them to uh, go and preach and heal disease and cast out devils and all these miraculous things. But you'll see when it gets to the first part of Acts, when he, remember when he tells them to go and tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. That's a different word because it's a different power. It's the Holy Ghost. And every child of God, you know, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection. That's the power he gives us as the body of Christ. And it's, you look up that word, it means miraculous power. That's exactly what it means. And you'll always see it after that in connection with the Holy Spirit and the working of miracles, healing of diseases, casting out of devils, all those things that he's telling them to do here, but he ain't went and paid the price for it yet. So he has to delegate them this authority, this power. And it's the same, the... The word, the, the power, like the Holy Ghost power that we get, it's the same word Paul uses when he's talking about the body of Christ. He says, we've not received the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and love and a sound mind. It's always miraculous power. All right, he says, now these are the names of the 12 apostles. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. We know those four pretty good. Now we got Philip. Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew the publican, the writer of this book, James the son of Alphaeus, and Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite. How about that? A Canaanite. Was, was he really a Canaanite? They just call him that? I don't know, but that's pretty interesting. I just now noticed that. And of course, Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Now, Jesus is getting ready to throw them in the deep end of the pool, pretty much, you know. And when you're trying to get into a cold pool just a little bit at a time, it's torture. It's better to just jump in. Jesus is fixing to throw them in. He says, uh, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and to any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, that, that was his mission statement. Remember, we've talked about this before, that he came to fulfill the promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But having said that, even in the Old Testament, there was always a place for the Gentiles. But, you know, Israel always saw that as they had to come through Israel, you know, to get to the Lord. But we know what happened with the Apostle Paul. And that, that all changed, didn't it? The middle wall of partition was broken down. And... uh but even here, even in his mission to just go to Israel, when people, when non-Israel people come to him, and like that woman from Canaan, he pretty much called her a dog, but she wouldn't leave him alone till he helped her. He helped her, didn't he? And uh, I guess the Roman centurion, he helped his servant. So Jesus always helped people that come to him, no matter who you were. And we know, we know now, after the fact, that he died for everybody that's ever lived. So there's that. Okay, he says... Uh, and here when he says, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And here's what goes with their preaching. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you've received, freely give. Now look at what they did. Some people that will divide these things up into what the 12 are doing versus what we do today. We need to look to the apostle Paul, they say, because he is our apostle. Everything he wrote was to us. But go back and look at what Paul did. Amen. Did he not, uh, I don't know if I can read where he cleansed the leper, but he certainly raised the dead. He, he certainly cast out devils and he healed the sick. All the same things. And that man said that he was the pattern for all the rest of us. Just wanted to make that point. And that last little bit, it says, freely you've received, freely give. A lot of churches like to throw that out there when it's time to give money, but that's got nothing to do with money here. He's talking about that power. I give it to you, you give it out to them. Amen says, uh, provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. So they, they're not even to take any money. They're supposed to rely solely on God and the goodness of these people he's sending them to. See, it's a test for those people too to see who's worthy and who's not and who's going to be obedient and who's not. He says, don't take no script for your journey. A script, I think, was just a little satchel to keep your snacks in probably. 
don't take two coats. Don't take, it says neither shoes. I don't know. I guess they, that counts as sandals. I don't, surely they weren't going barefoot. I don't know. Nor yet stays, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And he says, Into whatsoever city or town ye enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, if they're, you know, they, they, they welcome you in and, and they ain't mean or whatever, you know. He says, let your peace come upon it. But if they be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust from off your feet. Because you don't even want dust particles of that place on you nowhere because they were not worthy. They, they, they wouldn't hear the message. And there's, you know, it says somewhere in here, many are called, few are chosen. So mostly he got denied, I would say. I don't know. It says, Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Isn't that amazing? You know how bad Sodom and Gomorrah was, but according to him, it's going to be more tolerable for them than these people that would, uh, Jesus would come and his people would come and want to preach the good news, but they wouldn't have nothing to do with them. You'll see that in here. Remember, it says that he came to his own, his own received him not, and, uh, Jesus, this whole time, is going to tell about this wicked generation in Jerusalem. It's going to be bad for them. So much so that he's raising up Solomon and Gomorrah, and you'll see a few other places higher than them in the judgment. He says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. All right, something I want you to keep in mind when you're reading this. Again, he's talking about the kingdom of heaven, and it's here. They could have had it. Had they received Jesus, they could have had it. But if you go back to the book, the back of the book in Revelation, that's still part of it because that's known as the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be a great chastising in the time of Israel. That still was going to come, and he's talking about this when he's talking about these people that's going to, he's going to get to a point where he's saying brother's going to be against brother and the people of his own house is going to be against you. It's going to be a time like they've never seen before. As bad as they've had it, and they've had it bad, it's going to be even worse then. And, and you'll see that he's kind of got that in mind when he's talking about a lot of this stuff, I think. And he says, uh, they'll scourge you in their synagogues. He said, you'll be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought on how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. I've heard a lot of brethren try to use that for preaching. That ain't talking about preaching. That's talking about what you see early on in the book of Acts when the, the 12 were still out preaching and they were giving out what God gave them, to Jesus gave them to give out. And every chance that the, the Sanhedrin's, what they call like the council of the Pharisees and the, the religious Jews, they'd bring them in, they'd scourge them, they'd whip them, they'd tell them, don't you preach in that name. Then they'd send them on back their way. This is what he was talking about. He says, when you stand in front of them, don't worry about what you need to say. The Holy Ghost will give you what you need to say. Because he says right here, it's not you that speak, but the spirit of your father, which speaks in you. And the brother shall deliver up brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth till the end shall be saved. Remember, keeping that time, that awful time in mind, he that endures to the end shall be saved. But you'll see when we get there, there's going to be some that's going to have stamps on their, they're, they're going to be marked. I ain't going to say stamps. They're going to be, it says, mark the, the children of God that they don't get harmed and don't start doing all these things. And It's pretty wild once you get there, and I know I'm rattling on, but let's keep it going. He says, uh, but when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. So, you know, till the Son of Man be come, is that talking about the second coming? Is that talking about when he goes and gets glorified and comes back for 40 days? I don't know. They, they, they couldn't make it through all Israel till he come back, it said. He says, the disciple's not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, 
You've heard that word before, and I believe that means Lord of the Flies. I wouldn't swear to it, but it's a demon, whatever he is. He says, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear not them, therefore. Uh, fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be made known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak you in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. Amen. And fear not them which kill the body, but after not after, but now, nah, where I get at. Fear them not that can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Not able to kill the soul. So, I don't know if that means you could kill the soul. I don't, but, uh, he says, but rather fear them, fear him, rather. I'm struggling on it. Fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. All right. Now, most people, when they hear that, they think it's God that destroys them. But let me just throw this out here for you. It says, uh, who, uh, first of all, who has the power of death? You see that in the Bible. It's the devil has the power of death. Right here it says what he does is destroy. What's he do? Steal, kill, and destroy. Don't don't worry about killing but him that destroys both soul and body in hell. It says, fear him. But again, context. He's talking to these people in this coming kingdom. Now we, we've been, the body of Christ, we've been seated above all authority, all principality, all those things. We look down on all that. I don't, you know, unlike the, the writer Jude, that uh, when Michael and the devil was disputing over the body of Moses, it says even the archangel Michael didn't bring no, he didn't, called the devil names or look down on him or give no rating accusation i think it says so i don't know that we should either but we are not to fear him because jesus came to destroy his works he made a show of all these little dominion all these demons and all these principalities openly by casting them out he came to bind up the strong man cast him out and spoil his goods we are not to fear the devil anymore he, he, that's just his game that's the only game he's got left is to lie to you and act real big as a roaring lion. Remember, he's as a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. He's a serpent. And we've been given power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Remember that. Yeah, all right, I got carried away. It says, Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Now, that just blows me away. You know, people... People just idolize politicians and rock stars and athletes and would just give anything if they would even look their way at a ball game or something. They don't know who you are. They don't care. The God that spoke the universe into creation knows every hair on your head. That just blows me away. And he should you too. He says, Fear ye not, therefore, ye are much more value than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men... Him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? And should be a, a lesson for us. Don't be afraid to speak the name of Jesus. I know it's not uh, too popular these days, but it wasn't supposed to be. He says, I come. he's getting ready to tell you, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And that ain't just talking about people going to different churches and fighting. This is the big, this is the real deal. They're going to be against each other because some believe in him and some don't. He says, a man's foe shall be the they of his own household. He that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's pretty deep, isn't it? He that taketh not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. What's that cross mean? Death. You'll see in here where it says we die daily, that we died with Christ, we were crucified with him. And even in just denying your fleshly leanings, that's part of taking up the cross too. You know, not doing things that you know you're not supposed to do a lot of times. And uh, he says, he that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receives me receives him that sent me. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So if we receive the Lord, we're going to see what he's got to give us. Amen. 
And whosoever shall give, give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So there's chapter 10, a little lengthy, and a lot of them are. Hear them all out, but uh, Lord willing, we'll see you in the morning.